Uh, well, I'm a mathematician and I like action movies. Um, particularly Die Hard is one of my favorite uh, you know, action movie. And there's uh, one which has a couple of maths problems. And one very famous one is, is uh, in this clip. So just play the clip and then we'll talk about it a little bit. Careful. Be careful. Don't open it. What? I gotta open it. And it's gonna be all right. I told you not to open it! I trust you see the message. It has a proximity circuit, so please don't run. Yeah, I got it. We're not gonna run. Now we turn this thing off. On the fountain, there should be two jugs. Do you see them? A five-gallon and a three-gallon. Fill one of the jugs with exactly four gallons of water and place it on the scale, and the timer will stop. You must be precise. One ounce or more or less will result in detonation. If you're still alive, it will speak Wait, wait a sec! I don't get it. You get it? No. It's a problem. 30 seconds. <laughs> I mean, I'm pretty good at these things, but I don't know I mean, if this was the first time that somebody posed this problem to me. 30 seconds? I don't know. Anyway, so let's just have a really, really close look at what's going on here. Um, we've got um, two containers, a five-gallon container and a three-gallon container. And now Simon, the villain, tells us to uh, make exactly four gallons of water, just by kind of shuffling things back and forth between those two containers. Oh, no, 30 seconds. Well, we're probably dead, but anyway, <laughs> let's just think about it um, and see whether we can figure out what's going on there. All right. Um, so here's a solution, okay? Here's a solution, and I think anybody who, who actually thinks about this a little bit will come up with the solution. Okay, so what we do is we fill up the five-gallon container, and then we pour as much as possible from the five-gallon into the three-gallon container, so that leaves us with two gallons in the five and fills up the other one completely, okay? We've got two and three there. Okay, what comes next? Well, next thing we do is we just get rid of those three. Um, then we fill the two into the empty one, like that. Then we fill up the five gallon container, like this. And then we pour as much as possible from the five into this one here. Well, there's only one, one gallon that fits in here, so that gets us to four on that side finished. Put it on and, well, probably 10 minutes by now, but, you know, <laughs> we're in heaven. We're still putting it on. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> now, I've got a really, really, really cute uh, mathematical way of solving this problem and lots of related problems. And I just want to tell you about that one. Okay, here it goes. It actually goes with billiards, mathematical billiards. It's a special sort of billiards table. Um, well, if you have a look at it, it's not rectangular like the, the billiards table you find at pub. It's, um, it's kind of skewed, right? So there's a 60 degree angle here, right? And, uh, well, what are we going to do? Well, uh, first we'll have, have a look at the dimension of this table. The dimension is kind of a giveaway. Um, you know, there's three units kind of this way, and there's five units going this way. So that must have something to do with the volumes of the containers, all right? Then what we're going to do is we're going to put the billet ball in one of the corners and then we shoot it at 60 degrees and just see what it does, okay? And, well, let's just see what it does, right? So I'll shoot it. It uh, bounces here and it's reflected off at 60 degrees. And it bounces there and it goes like that and over here and there. And that's actually our solution. How is it our solution? Well, it's maybe not apparent yet. Well, it's probably not a parent yet. <laughs> so let's, let's, let's put in something else. So what we think of here is, is we think of this, this here and that one here as like axis of a coordinate system, like x, y. Okay? So if this is x and this is y, then there's the origin, uh, you know, 0, 0. And then we go over 1, this is, gets us to the point 1, 0, then over 2, point 2, 0, and so on. And up here is 0, 3, and there up in the corner is well, five over and three up, which is five, three, okay? Okay, so let's, let's shoot our billets ball again, okay? So we put it there. And right at the moment, 
it says five zero. And basically what it tells us is to fill this container all the way up. So we do that. Then we shoot the billets ball like that. And then we'll just read off the coordinates here, two, three, which tells us that we should pour water from here to there as much as possible. Okay, so there we go. All right, now it gets reflected off down to there. So we're now at two zero, which tells us we should get rid of the water in the three gallon container. So we get rid of that. Then follow it further, zero two, that means we're pouring the water from left to right. And then we go over here, which just means we're filling the five gallon up, all the way up. And then one more step, and that tells us, well, um, pour some water from the five gallon into the other one. And that leaves us with four three. It's exactly the solution that we came up with at the beginning. Okay? So pretty neat. Okay, well, uh, what if Simon had asked us to put uh, one gallon of water on the scales? Well, then that uh, method here actually tells us what to do. Because what we do is we just kind of um, keep on going here. Huh? Keep on going. So the billet ball kind of keeps on bouncing here. And let's just go all the way. And you can actually see it goes across all the lines that I had here originally. Okay? And well, now if you have a really close look, you can actually see that in this position here, um, that corresponds to one gallon being in here and nothing being in there. So you just take this, this container, put it on the scales, and you're okay. Now this one here corresponds to two gallons. Right? So you could also have done two gallons. If you had said two gallons, no problem. This one here says, well, well, three gallons is pretty obvious. You can just fill up that one and put it on. So that would be a really easy puzzle. So I mean, Simon's a bit meaner than that. Uh, four gallons we can also do. We've just done that. Five gallons easy, but there's more. You can also see at this point in time, there was five gallons in here and one in there. So we could actually take both containers, put them on a the scale, and that would be six gallons of water. Right? And in this position here, we have five gallons in here and two gallons in here. So that would give us seven gallons. We could put that one on and solve another puzzle. And we could also do five plus three, of course, eight. Right? So all the numbers from one to eight, we can actually do as this diagram shows us. Okay, there's more in here. I was wondering, actually, uh, then isn't there a, a faster way to get to one as soon as we touch five one or one three without having to complete the graph? Uh, yeah. Like so as soon as, as soon as you touch, as soon as you touch any one, you're mm -hmm. done. Right? Okay, good, good. Any any one, you're done. That's fine. Yeah. Um, so that was my <laughs> <laughs> my friend, colleague, and cameraman Giuseppe, who just had <laughs> the right thing to say. <laughs> All right. Now, next thing is. Um, there's lots more hiding in this diagram than, than you would imagine. Okay, so there's a second solution here. And the second solution, uh, well, how does this come about? Well, you could actually start from here instead of from there. Right? You just shoot the, the ball from there. And then what happens? Well, let's just see. Zero, 03 corresponds to filling that one up first. Remember, before we filled that one up, and then we kind of, the water was kind of flowing in this direction. You kind of always fill this one up and pour over there until it's full, and then you kind of get rid of stuff, right? And now kind of the water's flowing in the opposite direction, okay? Okay, now we shoot the billiards ball down there, tells us transfer the water, right? Now we shoot it up there, tells us fill that one up. Water's flowing from here, right? Okay, next one, 5 1. So we pour as much as possible over here, gets us to 5 1. Okay, then what are we supposed to do now? Just get rid of that one. No? Then um, transfer the one. Then fill up the three. Then um, you know, just pour it in, and you've got your other four. That's the second solution. It's a bit longer than the first one, but also works. Pretty neat, right? OK, what else is there? Well, I should really tell you why this works. Right? Yeah. I'm the methodologer. Right? I'm not really happy about all this stuff <laughs> until I've got a really, really good explanation for these things. OK, uh, so how do we explain this? Well, basically, the method works because the individual bits that the path is made of work. Okay, what do I mean by this? Let's have a look at one of those connections here. What does that connection actually stand for? Well, it stands for uh, one of the jugs being completely empty, the 5 one, and the other one has something in it. And then what this connection stands for is just filling that guy which is empty all the way up. And if you go the other way, which might also happen, it just means you just empty the completely full 
five gallon jug, um, you know, and that's it, right? And obviously, if you're in a, in a state like this, if you're in state zero one, you can go this way, and if you're in state five one, you can go there. So this connection here stands for something that really works in reality, okay? Uh, now there's a second kind of connection here, uh, there's this one here. It's exactly the same sort of thing. Instead of filling an empty five, or empty a full five, you're now filling an empty three, or emptying a full three, okay? So exactly the same thing. This sort of connection here corresponds to something that really works in reality. Okay, now I've got a third kind of connection that goes this way. Well, there's, it's actually a little bit more complicated here, the situation, because, well, you can have a connection like that, but you can also have something like this, and it can be down there and there. So, you know, what, what's going on here? Well, for this one here to really see what's, what's going on, it's actually helpful to kind of go in little segments here. So let's just start from here and just go to this point here. Okay, that's actually 3, 1. Okay, so it's 3 over, 1 over. So what, what are we actually doing when we're kind of moving along this, this segment? Well, we are kind of pouring water out from the, from the big one, from the 5 gallon one, and we're filling it into the other one, right? So here we start with 4, 0. We're going 1 down and 1 up. Total amount of water stays the same, right? And so we're, we're moving in this direction. We're basically pouring water from here to there. One segment here corresponds to one, one busy gallon making a transfer, right? And when you hit the other side, well, you got exactly the right amount. You're basically hitting this boundary, so it's going to work, right? So it's going to work. This sort of transfer, again, corresponds to something that, uh, you know, happens in reality. So these, these two points, when you actually connect them, um, you know, that, that really works. Now, a pass, a billiard, uh, the pass of the billiards ball um, is just made up from these individual segments that work, right? So if we start out with something that we can actually achieve, like a 5-0, then all the other bits are connected by things that work, so the whole thing has to work. So we automatically do the right thing. Nothing can go wrong. Okay, what else? Well, uh, at some point in time, there's going to be Die Hard 25, and actually, actually pride myself that I'm a little bit, uh, I look quite similar to Bruce Willis. <laughs> so I, I'm, I'm going to see whether I can be Bruce Willis in Die Hard 25 and then solve the problem with my method here. So in but Die Hard 25, there's also going to be, a, a Di Simon's going to be back, he's out of prison by now. And uh, I don't know actually whether he died. He probably died, right? <laughs> I can check it. While so you can you're check it. Yeah, you you check it. Okay. So Giuseppe is going to check it while I'm. <laughs> he's going to check it on his iPhone while I keep talking. <laughs> anyway, so let's just say Simon's back, either from prison or from the dead, and he's going to tell me. Uh, well, this time I'm going to make it harder for you. I'm going to have a six-gallon jug and a fifteen-gallon jug, and what I want you to make is a, a five gallons of water. Okay, and I'm going to, you know, see whether my method actually works, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make up a, a billets table that has dimensions 15 and 6, and then I'm going to just run my ball, okay? And I, you know, fingers crossed and see what happens, right? So I run my ball, and actually, mm, there's a bit of a problem here, because the billets ball actually doesn't hit every single one of the points down here. So it doesn't hit any one of the, it doesn't hit the 1, doesn't hit the 2, it hits the 3, not the 4, not the 5, hits the 6, in fact, all the coordinates that you come across here are multiples of three. And that's sort of true in general. So if you've got, um, you know, uh, volumes here and there, then what you can do is, you, well, what you have to do is you basically take the greatest common divisor of the two numbers, which in this case is three, and then all the volumes you can make up are just uh, um, multiples of, of that greatest common divisor. Um, well, in this case, we're actually out of luck. He, he said, I, I was supposed to do a five. I can't do a five. There's no, you know, there's no five anywhere in here that, that's going to work. So I actually have to think of something else. Uh, I'll probably be dead 30 seconds. I won't be able to think of anything else.